genie, genie of the lamp, how do I get people to like me? Genie says, Chris Crone from Limitless TV will tell you how to get people to like you today. So you want people to like you, right? I want to share with you uh, some information today that is all about this topic. Um, I'm an ex-people pleaser. I just want to be really upfront. It's like Alcohol's Anonymous. This is People Pleasers Anonymous. And um, I started out a lot of my life thinking that I needed everyone to like me. I needed to please people. I needed them to be okay with me. And I was searching for their validation and I was searching for really acceptance. And I want to share with you that nothing can ever replace learning how to accept yourself. And I want to share a caution and more on that as we get to the end of the video as a really important bonus segment. But let's get on with what do you do to actually get people to like you and be able to jam with them, jive with them? First of all, it's important to understand that all humanity can be broken up into certain personality types. Now there are all sorts of personality tests out there, right? There's there's the color code and then there's the, you know, there's, there's monkey and lion and animal ones and and there's and there's type there's type this and type four and type two and there's all these different concepts. I'm gonna share a very simple version of one of those today with you that has helped me over the years know how to connect with people. Because if you wanna be liked and if you wanna be accepted, you have to know how to get with people at their level. Same thing as a parent. You want to have good influence with your child, you gotta get on their level. Before I ever try to teach a child something, I try to enter their world. My little boy Danny, he's a warrior, so he wants to wrestle. That's where I connect with him. And my little daughter, Livia, she is a healer. And so she wants to talk about unicorns and rainbows, right? Get with people where they're at. And so ultimately, take a look at these four different personality types. I'm gonna chalk them up here as warrior, healer, oracle, and visionary. A warrior is your type A personality. These are people that wanna get it done yesterday. They are action takers and they wanna act now. They often emerge as leaders. Sometimes they're pushy, sometimes they're overbearing, sometimes they're hard to deal with. But if you got a project where you got a deadline, you better have a warrior leading the pack. So warriors, um, you gotta understand how warriors wanna interact with you. And um, a warrior doesn't wanna speak to someone who's passive, lacking energy. They want, they want to connect with you on their level, which is that warrior level. Next, we got healers. Now, warriors and healers are on opposite sides of the spectrum. The healer is slow, peaceful, calm. Uh, they're peacemakers. Healers are interested intrinsically not in money or selling something or creating value as much as caring for people, nurturing people, loving and feeling loved. So when you're dealing with a healer, you slow things down, whereas with a warrior, you speed things up. Warriors, you cannot ever talk fast enough for as fast as they wanna go and as fast as their mind works. Healers, you wanna take time just to connect and be and go their pace. Oracles are on a different spectrum than what I'll talk about in a minute, which are your visionaries. Oracles are those blueprinters. They're the ones that have to understand the way the world works. They want to map. They want to break it down. They want to look at charts and numbers and statistics and percentages. This is really important to them because this is how they see their world. And they can create, I mean, we would have a chaotic world if we did not have oracles in it because oracles are the ones that make sure our buildings don't topple over or that make sure that businesses are operating off of the correct assumptions as best as possible. And when you connect with an oracle, they don't want emotion involved and they don't worry your high energy or power struggle involved. They wanna to speak to you from a, a point of statistics and numbers and steps. If I were sitting down with uh, an oracle and we were talking about doing something, we would talk about the steps in which we would do it. We would talk about the proper sequencing because that's where the world makes sense. And then finally on that list, you got visionaries. So your visionaries, on the other hand, they need excitement and energy, and they just wanna have fun. They wanna play. There might be other things to do, but they'll slough responsibility often if it means seizing the moment and doing something spontaneous and something that thrills them. Now, if I were just to demonstrate these four personalities just in the way I sit, this is the way a warrior wants to engage you. They wanna be front and center. They wanna connect with you. They wanna know the steps. They use a lot of body language. They'll use a lot of volume in their energy. And they're gonna, you're gonna experience passion from them. A healer is gonna be more calm and comfortable and speak a little bit slower. They can use more monotone sound and voices. 
There's going to be an energy of emotion and caring and compassion often, or they, if they're sad, you're going to know it. They're very deeply empathic people. They make their decisions according to how they feel. And so that's important for them. Oracles, often stiff and rigid, formal and proper. And you can tell when you're sitting down with an oracle because everything is formal. And then finally, visionary. What's up, dude? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, what are we going to do to have some fun? Okay, visionaries, they just want to get out there and play. They got a lot of charisma. They got a lot of energy. And they want to channel that, right? Okay, so that's just a little information that if you want to be liked, you got to understand that here's the lesson. Whatever you are, whatever your primary and secondary, and maybe you got a little of all of them, whatever you are, you tend to communicate with your world in what you are. If you're predominantly warrior, you will turn off healers. You will rub oracles the wrong way. And visionaries will usually get along well with you because they like your passion and energy. If you're a healer, you're often turned off by the warrior. You can do very well with oracles, but there's a disconnect that you don't necessarily like. And visionaries are very emotional. So healers and visionaries get along super, super well. Oracles get along best with oracles. They look at visionaries as silly and irresponsible. They look at warriors as often a necessary evil but annoying. And they're going to get along most well with healers in general, even though that, emo that emotional mushy-gushy stuff is no good for them. Visionary, they can get along amazingly well with visionaries and probably least well with oracles because there's nothing stiff and rigid that, that they really want to play with. And so they're going to do really well with the warrior type of personality. So if you understand the way the world works, this is a complicated psychology of, of Meyer and Briggs brought down to four simple personalities. And just take inventory, look at the body language, look at the speech tones and start diagnosing. Who am I talking to? Who's my audience? And people typically like to be treated the way they are, not the way you are. You wanna know how to be liked. Get with people on their level of where they feel most comfortable. Now. Before you do this, there's a light and a dark side of this. The dark side is called manipulation and the light side is called authenticity. So where I'm about to head next is not just with my caution of what to watch out for, but it's also what kind of characteristics to be and develop as a human being that creates trust and creates an energy that says, um, I do like you and I want to be with you. And most importantly, this, my good friend Dan Clark says this, he's a professional speaker. I like how, who I am when I'm with you. That's a person you can become. Let's talk about it. Okay, now that you have a concept of these four personalities, let's bring it back home with this one piece of advice that's more important than anything. Do you need the approval of others? I once heard this famous prayer. God, free me from the need of the approval of other people. Here's the reality. You will be inauthentic just like people pleasers are, trying to gain the approval of other people by putting on a mask and trying to show up in a way so that they can finally validate you and say that you're good enough. Listen, you can go your entire life seeking the approval of other people. But if it becomes a need deep down inside of you, I'm telling you right now, it's going to fester. You'll put people up on a pedestal and you'll kick it out from underneath them. You'll want people to put you on a pedestal. You'll want to bring your plus, your, believe your press clippings. And you know what? At the end of the day, a much happier way of being is honor. Honor and authenticity. What do I mean by that? Authenticity means some people will like me and some won't and that's okay. And personal honor means that you're not going to strive for, for the approval of someone that you don't respect or that you don't want. This comes back to the agenda issue of wanting things for people and wanting to control people and needing to be liked. And the problem is, is that the moment you need that, that becomes first position to the other things that are far more important in life. For me, this is how it goes. Some people love me, some people hate me, and I'm okay either way. It's information. You are free to like me. You are free to hate me. You can subscribe. You can unsubscribe. Please subscribe. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's your choice whether I resonate with you or not. And I'm okay with that. In other words, I detach from the agenda that says I need something from you or I want something from you because that's not a conditional, that's not an unconditional love. That's a conditional relationship. I want to have a real relationship with you where there are no strings attached that really says it's safe for you to be you around me. It's safe for you to like me 
and it's safe for you not to like me. That's the world of reality. And when you become free from the need of approval of others, you take that pendulum swinging far left, far right, and I believe you find a dead center balance right in the middle. The skills I've taught you today, they're there for you to know how to connect and relate to people and to get on their level and to invite them on your level. And then other than that, if you really want to be liked, detach from the idea of other people needing to like you so that when they choose to like you, you know that it's real. You know that it's authentic and that feels good. How you ultimately free yourself from this is there's one person's approval you need the most. Right here. It's your own. Give yourself the one thing that no one else will ever be able to. The security that you're looking for, the validation, it can only come from within. So stop seeking from without. Notice that whenever you've gotten it, it lasted just like a meal a short while, and then it dissipated and was gone, and then you were required to get more. The only satisfaction that you'll ever get in looking for that can be found from within. So be enough. Decide that you're enough. Believe that you're okay in the way you are. Be comfortable, accept yourself, love yourself. And by doing this, you can get past the need of needing other people to like you or not like you. And you can get on living your life and doing great, important things without being in your own way. Thanks for joining on today's adventure. We've got more adventures coming your way. Please subscribe. We got plenty more videos coming out on a daily basis to help you grow and elevate your life to the next level. Take care.